hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Why midnight? Why was the Son of God born at midnight in Bethlehem in the piercing cold, in the bleak midwinter, upon a midnight clear, while shepherds were watching and keeping the night watches as we read in the Gospel? Nothing good happens after midnight. The night is dark. It is a time of emptiness and fear, of despair and desolation. The world was in darkness, a darkness that sin had brought upon it, the sin of our first parents when they turned away from God's presence, from the light. And we are still in darkness this evening, this cold and wet December night. The world is in despair, consumed by anxiety, fear, and global panic. And God is nowhere to be found. The world continues in sin, steeped in darkness. And yet, light follows darkness. At the beginning of the world, on the first day of creation, God divided light from darkness. He is the light that lightened the world and will continue to lighten the world. He is the one that gives order to chaos, that causes being, that gives life. He is the one that calls us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Darkness is the absence of light. Darkness is a godless existence. Darkness is nothing and causes nothing. It is nothing to be afraid of. Because on this night, on this most holy night, God once again divides light from darkness. God has made this most holy night to shine forth with the brightness of the true light, we prayed in the collect. The brightness of God has shone round about us, for this day is born to us a Saviour, who is Christ the Lord. We are saved by the light. He who is the brightness of the Father's glory, God of God, light of light, true light of the world has been born for us to set us free from darkness and the shadow of death. Just as the rays of the sun light up the morning sky, so the light and splendor of God the Father, the second person of the Blessed Trinity, is revealed to us as an infant babe at Bethlehem. The absence of light has been replaced by the presence of light, by Emmanuel, God's presence, God with us. And we, my brothers and sisters, are born into that light, the light of faith. In baptism, we have received the gift of faith. We have become children of the light. In this sacrament, God, once again, divides light from darkness. We become a new creation, reborn as children of God, cleansed and transformed in the light of Christ. We are, as Christians called, not only to believe in the light, but also to walk in the light. But sometimes, we walk away from the light. We love to choose and see our paths. We get distracted by the flashing neon lights of the world, the artificial lights that draw us away from our real destination, 
from our true happiness. We love the garish day. And, like Lucifer, the light bearer who fell from grace, pride rules our will and we fall into sin. But, once again, again and again, God divides light from darkness, this time in the sacrament of penance, in the confessional. By declaring our sorrow, by confessing our sins, and through the words of absolution spoken by the priest, by Christ's own authority, our Saviour imparts to human hearts the light of grace as he redeems us from all iniquity. As the wise men gazed on the bright star that led them to Christ, so we must allow ourselves to be led by the light, the kindly light of St. John Henry Newman's hymn and prayer amid the encircling gloom. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness will not overcome it. There is light at the end of the tunnel. That light is the source of our hope, the light of glory, the brightness of the saints. Christ has made light inaccessible, accessible. That light which would otherwise blind us was made visible for us in the babe at Bethlehem. And if we remain in faith, in hope, and most importantly, in charity, that light will be our eternal vision in heaven. At the end of the world too, God will divide light from darkness. In the words of the epistle, we should live soberly and justly and godly in this world, looking for, expecting the blessed hope and coming of the great God and our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Despair is not an option. The virtue of hope gives us firm confidence that God will keep us in his light and never abandon us until we reach the kingdom of light, unless we of our own accord, walk away from it. There may be plenty of reasons for despair, a pandemic of sin, a moral darkness that covers the earth, but tonight, at this midnight hour, we Christians are filled with light and hope. Fear not, the angel tells the shepherds. The mother of hope The cause of our joy, the morning star, has given birth. Light follows darkness. If we believe in the light, if we walk in the light, if we live in the light of faith, in the light of grace, if we live according to our baptismal promises, going regularly to confession, we will one day attain the light of glory, and enjoy the happiness of heaven. A blessing I wish upon us all in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.